Hello everyone, Josh from City 2000 here, and today I've got another video for you all for Comic Book Carnage. Today I've got one for you all on Batman One Dark Knight. This is one of the new Batman Black Label books. This is the first book of it. And we're going to be going over this one in quite some detail because I want to discuss this quite a bit. It starts with Batman and a number of people at Arkham transferring a supervillain by the name of EMP. Now, I'm not sure if he's existed before in Batman or if he's just for the sake of the story. But the first issue is kind of setting up. So we meet Batman, Alfred. We kind of get an idea for how this rider does their dynamic. Because if I'm not mistaken, I don't think I've seen this guy write a Batman book before. I think this is actually his first time. So, there we are. Now, one thing I also want to talk about, the art for this book's really good. Especially like later on in the issue when you've got like some of the problems coming up. Uh, it's essentially what happens is, this person that they're transferring, he's called the MP for a reason, which is basically like, you know, he's capable of emitting a blast that can wipe out all the power in the city and essentially stuff goes pear-shaped when his old gang and one of his old enemies try and fight over the convoy and yeah you know it's uh, becomes kind of a clusterfuck to be honest and it essentially ends with him getting out and Batman tries to pursue him get him to calm down before he goes off and it doesn't work so the entire city is essentially plunged into darkness. So that is what we're dealing with going into the next issue. So, you know, th this issue, there's not really a massive lot to talk about other than the setup for it. And the, the book also delves into a little bit with Commissioner Gordon and this other character that we have. She's kind of like the head of uh, the prisons and stuff. So, you know, you've got like she's in charge of Blackgate and Arkham Asylum and it's implied that she's made choices here that Gordon doesn't necessarily agree with and that he thinks are pretty foolhardy because she is the one who masterminded the idea of developing this uh, place in Blackgate to hold him more securely and then she was also the one who masterminded the idea behind the transfer and, you know, as the blurb says, it was the sort of mission Batman has run a thousand times. From high above the, the sweltering summer streets of Gotham, Batman would escort the GCPD as the dangerous metahuman supervillain known as EMP was transferred from a temporary holding cell to his permanent home at Blackgate Prison in Gotham Harbor. EMP's electrical powers posed a dangerous threat but the situation was well in hand, until it wasn't. Now every light in Gotham is out and the police have been knocked into disarray and a broken bleeding Batman must fight his way to Blackgate, block by block, dragging EMP behind him. But it's not just the gangs who want to make life difficult for him. The dark corners of Gotham contain many surprises and EMP has more shocks to deliver before the night's through. And it's also saying that you know it's done by one of the most iconic Batman artists of the 21st century. And this is also the guy who did the Black Black Mirror, a Batman book I talked about a very long time ago that I remember noting specifically for its artwork. And um, yeah, honestly, just like I'm really looking forward to like the next one comes out in February. We're we're going into February now, so hopefully it shouldn't be too long until we get another one of these. Because I'm actually really enjoying this book. Um, to be honest, what I might do is I might do one on the first issue and then when the, the rest of the series is out, do a video on all of it, kind of like what I did with Three Jokers and what I did with Hellblazer Rise and Fall. Uh, this, the Black Label books, um, with the first kind of, especially in this more prestige format where they're the big books, you know, like Harleen and that. I tend to find it's you have more to talk about when you have the whole story and that they only tend to be like three uh, volumes well not volumes uh, three uh, kind of I guess these issues 
It feels wrong calling these issues. These are too nice to be issues. Um, but yeah, you know, the the except the only exception to that that I can think of is the question, and that was only one more. That was four. So yeah, uh, one dark night. I'd highly recommend it. It's quite a, a decent little premise, and I'll be interested to see what they do with it. The artwork, especially when the city's plunged into darkness, is incredibly good. I'm also interested to see what the writer's going to do with Commissioner Gordon in this book, because he features fairly prominently. Alfred was also... I found Alfred quite amusing in this book as well, to be honest. He, he seemed to be used as a little, little bit more of comic relief, but with the comlinks being down and that, I don't think we're going to see much of Alfred. And I must admit, with Alfred being dead in the mainline Bat books, it's, uh, it's nice to see Alfred again. Well... I think both Alfred and Jim are no longer around in the mainline Batman books. So it's nice to read some of these Black Label stuff that takes place outside the canon. And you have like those characters that are currently missing from the, uh, the current timeline. And you can still kind of get a dose of some of the more iconic characters. It's like, in the main Batman book at the moment, I think... Is it Rie Montoya that's the commissioner? It's either Bullock or Rie Montoya that is the commissioner. It's one or the other. I think it was Bullock and then it might have changed over to Montoya. I could be wrong, but uh, the current book isn't... Uh, the current main Batman book isn't actually taking place in Gotham at the moment. Uh, it's to do. It's following some of this stuff to do with Batman Inc. Uh, now here's the thing, I hope you don't mind me interjecting about the normal Batman book a little bit, because I've been meaning to do a video on that for ages, and I've just never got the chance. So it's one of those where it's like, you know, I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff in the mainline Batman book. Uh, but you know, it's all related back to the fact that, you know, One Dark Knight, I quite liked it. It's a good starting point, I'd highly recommend you pick it up. It's the usual price for one of these prestige ones. Uh, six dollars 99 if you're doing the us uh, i can't remember what the price is in uk it's a uh, it's lower in poundage i know that much because the exchange rate but i couldn't tell you an exact number but i'm not a walking currency converter so you know anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this video i've got something special coming out for you as well uh I hope you, in well, it's probably already out by the time I've got this edited and up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed Warhammer War Journal. It's something I'm going to try and do a bit more regularly. Anyway, I'm also, I'm going to record some of these in batches. I've got a pile of comics that I've caught up on here that I'm going to record audio for. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to record the audio and just have it sat there and I'll like basically, I'm going back to the original plan that I made when I was talking about the Moon Knight uh, series. Like, you know, I'm, I originally planned to record several in bulk and then just make them as and when I could. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed. I'm not sure... I'm not sure when this is going to be up, but when it's up, it's up. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.